Hi, this is Bill Dannenmeyer, CEO of Black Box Partners. In this video, we'll show you a short introduction of Monte Carlo models. And let's get started. One of the more sophisticated techniques that is used to create probabilistic estimates of project scheduling is Monte Carlo. This spreadsheet shows a Monte Carlo model. The model is set up to calculate the finish time of a particular project given a set of dependencies. The tasks on the project are shown as these boxes, and the dependencies between the tasks are shown as the arrows between the boxes. The network diagram is displayed with a critical path of the tasks in red. In this case, C, F, I, and K are the critical path. That represents the longest path in the network in terms of duration. Notice that it's 24.5 the shortest time in which the project can be completed, and the path with the least or zero total float. Notice the total float is zero for each of these tasks. Below the network diagram is a simple calculation of the durations of the paths on the project. There are five paths in this project. There's A, D, G, J, A E H J, B E H J, B I K, and C F I K. If the path is on the critical path, it's noted in this diagram. As we said, C F I K is the critical path in this network diagram at the moment, and it says yes when on the column that says C P question mark for critical path. Below the critical path, area is the Monte Carlo single experiment or iteration area. In this area, for each task, an optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely estimate has been made. The random row below the most likely optimistic and pessimistic estimates, the random row is of the single experiment table is like a dice with random settings from 1 to 6 using the random function of Microsoft Excel. If the random value is 1, such as we see here on J, an optimistic scenario is selected and the optimistic value is pulled from the table above. If the random, random seed is 6, a pessimistic result is given, and the pessimistic estimate is shown below. For all other cases, 2 through 5, the most likely is chosen for each one of the tasks. In this way, the most likely is weighted with 66% of the results. Based on random now, we have a value from the estimates being selected and constructed using the dependencies above into a network duration. Recalculating random will be a new experiment or iteration of the model. So we'll recalculate once. This time we've recalculated. It turns out that the random selection of variables below has resulted in two critical paths. ADGJ is now worth 26.5 duration, and AEHJ is also worth 26.5 in duration. So we have two critical paths in this network diagram at the moment, and that is as a result of the Monte Carlo iteration. We'll iterate again, and we find the critical path has moved again, this time to BEHJ. Moving again, we notice that it will run through all of the various possibilities of optimism, pessimism, and most likelihood, resulting in changes in the critical path and in changes in the likely duration. In order to do a Monte Carlo analysis, what we're doing is accumulating 
iterations of the model. To accumulate iterations of the model, we capture the results of the model below and we'll calculate 100 iterations as the model progresses through a Visual Basic program. This will then be graphed as our results. And this will be, by the way, only a 100 iteration Monte Carlo. For a Monte Carlo to be done in a professional setting, you would want to run through 10,000 iterations to make sure to capture even the most unlikely of possible scenarios. Click the Run the Monte Carlo model. Did not take very long because it's only 100 iterations. And we see here that the Monte Carlo has given us a small possibility, about 1 or 2 percent of a duration of 9, 10, 19 on this model, and a small possibility, 1 or 2 percent, of a duration of 31. 50% likelihood is that it'll be 23.6 or so, which we can see in the uh, median here, which is 23.85. The middlemost number is 23.85. The minimum we've got is 19. The maximum is 31. Now, with only 100 iterations, though that seems like a lot of iterations, you'll see that there will be some chatter in the results from the data sets. So we'll run through another iteration, see what it comes up with. Notice that now it's the minimum is 19.9 and the maximum is 33.5. The theoretical maximum would be if everything was pessimistic in the model. So the theoretical maximum would be the sum of the pessimistic estimates for the longest path in the network. With, micro, with Monte Carlo and modeling and the ability to generate an understanding of the probabilistic outcomes of the precedence diagramming network, we are able as project managers to speak more intelligently about the estimates that we are making for our projects. This has been another short video from Black Box Partners. Thank you very much for your time and attention.